So thinking about what we are going to cover today then on the slide. I'm going to start by looking at what is a disability and spend a bit of time going back over the statutory definition because as we come on to discuss the knowledge requirement in disability discrimination claims, the statutory definition is very relevant to that. So I think it's important for us to have a good overview of that when we're going on to think about the more complex, complex issue of knowledge. We're then going to think about what a hidden disability is and what do we mean by that? Before going on to look at the three different types of knowledge in disability discrimination claims, now, it says on the slide there that they are actual, imputed and constructive knowledge. And we'll spend a bit of time looking at what it means for an employer to be fixed with those types of knowledge. We're then going to look at what the knowledge requirement is in different disability discrimination claims. Now, it is not a set knowledge requirement across all of the claims. And different claims do have different knowledge requirements. So that's why it's important to break them down individually. And then at the end, I'm just going to spend a bit of time thinking about what employers and employees can do to protect their position in disability discrimination claims themselves and before it gets to that point. Now, first is that constructive knowledge is not fixed simply because the employer failed to inquire about a possible disability. It is not enough for the employer to stick their head in the sand and say, I'm not going to ask any questions and therefore I'm not going to be fixed with, compute, with constructive knowledge. The employer needs to do what it reasonably can to ascertain whether or not an individual has a disability. The second is that knowledge the employer ought to know is that which is relevant to the definition of disability. So I said this before. It does not matter whether the employer would have understood that the relevant facts rendered the employee disabled under the Equality Act. It does not matter that the employer does not know the name of the condition. What matters is that the employer knows that the employee has a physical or mental impairment or, and that impairment has a substantial long-term adverse effect on the ability to carry out day-to-day -day activities. And here, remember, when we're talking about constructive knowledge, we're talking about that they ought to have known these things. 